Hello there, welcome back to the new video. In this video, we'll be going through this very interesting paper which is titled as Long T5, Efficient Text-to-Text -text Transformer for Long Sequences. This is from researchers from Google Research. But before we move forward, I want to tell you that today's video is sponsored by Segmind. It's an end-to-end -end MLOps platform enabling enterprises and teams to build cloud-native and portable ML pipelines. So here's a quick overview of what ML developer community can do. Hope you enjoyed this sneak peek so visit their website to know more the link is there in the description so let's move on to the paper so as the title itself says right we're talking about going t5 and extending it to long sequences so just to give you a quick overview of what t5 is it stands for text to text transfer transformer where it kind of models multiple kinds of tasks such as regression classification question answering summarization and all of that by considering both input and output as strings and it trains an encoder decoder model with self attention and cross attention so this is one of the novelty of t5 model where for example if you even talk about the regression model where let's say you have a string and you have to score whether how funny this string is supposed to be in a scale of 1 to 5 so the authors in the paper kind of do the quantization at 0.2 level so let's say it could be 0 0.5 0 0.3 point one and these are the strings that we're talking about because since it's a regression task the output space is infinite so they want to kind of quantize and make it tractable for the model so now this 0 0.5 is basically a string of three characters and this is what is the model is supposed to generate on its output end and the second thing that the t5 introduces is their pre-training strategy which is based on masking phrases of more than one word of contiguous indexes from the input end and that is what you are supposed to produce on the output end. So for example, if you take this as the input and I mask out efficient text to then based on hyphen text transformer, we'll get a representation over here, which is thought vector. And this goes to the decoder part. And the thing that decoder decodes is basically efficient text to these three words is what we are supposed to get as an output does. And since I've said, right, this is a unified framework that works across multiple tasks such as summarization, question answering, classification, regression, and all sort of things. So they also add the notion of prefix token, which is prepended to every input text sequence. So in this case, it could be, let's say any dummy prefix, let's say ABC, which we prepend to it and perform the task. So this prefix essentially allows the model to kind of scope down its parameters in terms of the task that we are actually interested in and only activate those segments that are good enough to perform let's say ABC task or summarization task for that matter. So yeah, that's in crux the entire idea how T5 works and the model is trained in a typical sense of quadratic attention where at any word it will attend to all the words that are there to its neighbors to its left and right. So for longer sequences now this becomes a problem because if you are going beyond let's say 1000 tokens, 2000 tokens, 3000 tokens and so on, the computation time for these attention values increases drastically. That is one thing that this paper essentially talks about which is long T5 where they introduce an optimization on how do you want to calculate attention that is much faster than the quadratic one and performs better than the existing T5 model on certain tasks. So let's see the abstract and then go to the exact method. Also for T5, I would recommend you to kind of watch one of my videos that I have on this channel where I've done a detailed walkthrough of the entire paper. I'll put the link to that in the I button, make sure to check it out. And also feel free to show your love to this channel by clicking on like and subscribe button and make sure to share it across the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. Cool. So let's move to the abstract. Recent work has shown either increasing the input length or increasing model size can improve the performance of transformer based neural models. Yeah, correct. Because if you add more capacity to the model, the parameters increase and the chances of it learning things gets better. 
but totally depends on how much data you're training on because that could easily lead to overfitting and the second point is about increasing the input length so yeah that's also kind of correct because if you're let's say talking about question answering or summarization the more the context the model is actually able to see at one go while producing the output it will be able to attend to all those nuances from the entire text so in this paper we proposed long t5 a model that explores the effects of scaling both input length and model sizes at the same time they pick some ideas from the paper long input transformers around how to model attention and also adopt the pre-training strategy from the paper pegasus and they have also performed ablation studies to show that masking entire sentence and then reproducing it on the output end which is what pegasus does is better than what a typical t5 would do which is masking a phrase and then outputting it on the decoder end they also named their new attention mechanism as transient global attention and they were able to achieve state of the art results on several summarization question answering task and also outperform the original t5 model on these tasks cool so if you see this figure as well as you go to the right hand side of this x axis the input sequence increases i think this is on the token level so 16k tokens basically which is a lot a typical research paper for that matter is roughly close to 4k to 6k or maybe 8k words long so this is on archive and this is on pubmed under the same scale of x axis and the y axis is average rouge score which is rouge 1 plus 2 plus l by 3 where 1 2 and l are nothing but unigram bigram and longest common subsequence overlap we can see right the t5 is almost on its right corner which is it was able to scale to very large sequences and still maintain very high accuracy compared to all other models and similarly for pubmed for 16k nobody is even close to maintaining that high accuracy at those number of input sequences so clearly this is working and the radius of this bubble what you see kind of defines the model parameters so this is like 5x 6x bigger than big bird pegasus and all of that so clearly what they claim right which is you can go to longer sequences which we see till 16k 16k and also if you increase the model size which is defined by this radius of this bubble we are able to get significantly better performance than existing systems so yeah that's pretty cool let's move on so we have already seen what t5 is and i'll put that video in the i button make sure to check it out so let's move on to the architecture of long t5 so for the work reported in this paper we used standard t5 decoder since all tasks were considered require relatively shorter output sequence length Okay, so the main thing that we are kind of tweaking here is the attention mechanism that happens on the encoder side, and that's what they say, which is and they propose two mechanisms. One is local attention, other is transient global attention, and both adhere to the properties that the original T5 has, which is relative position representation, support for example packing, compatibility with the T5 checkpoint. So here, example packing is something new. So example packing is the idea where let's say merge or concatenate multiple examples to make one bigger sequence so that you don't waste out the privilege that you get of going through longer sequences but unfortunately your example was pretty short so there you can kind of concatenate multiple examples to adhere to that max length okay so let's move on to figure 2 and see what local attention and transient global attention mean so for local attention this is the attention map that you have so here you define your attention queries here you define your keys So I'm assuming you guys are already familiar with what keys, queries, and values are, and what these notations actually mean in terms of transformers and attention. But if you ask me to let's say explain it in 30 seconds, so how we'll go about doing it is let's say if this is the input sentence that you have, and you have to get the representation for the word attention, so this becomes your query because this is what you're interested in, and these are all the key tokens that you have. And eventually you'll do the dot product with key representation and the query representation. followed by softmax to get it in the range of 0 to 1 and then you do a linear combination of values weighted by those attention scores so here let's say this word is attention what is over here so this is attention and these are all the keys that you have right so here what i talked about was the auto regressive notion of what keys could be but t5 as you know and typical transform anyways is bidirectional so the right hand side would also comprise of all these words as keys so this is what you represent on the y axis So now for the word attention you will just be attending to the word itself which is for every word the diagonal kind of gives you the word itself and also certain number of words to its left and certain number of words to its right and that is what is called as local attention it would have been 
a full fledged n square stuff if you would be going through all the words that are there on the left axis all the words that are there on the right axis but you didn't do that you just confined your space to a certain window and that's what is mattering for you to get the representation for this query word so with this you kind of reduce your complexity from going quadratic to something linear in input of sequence length l so it becomes order of l cross r where l is nothing but the actual input length that you have because you'll anyways have to traverse it once but for each traversal you are just looking for tokens in the r radius so l cross r is the total order complexity that you are dealing over here that's much faster than l cross l the second one is transient global attention and this is the picture that talks about it so here again we have attention queries over here attention keys over here the extra thing that you can see from the previous one is this matrix because rest everything looks the same for this query word this is the center this is the word itself you're doing a local attention of r words to its left r tokens to its right but in the previous one you had a disadvantage of not knowing what the tenth word or the thousandth word could be so that way you're kind of missing out on the information of capturing a global sense of what's written in the entire context so this matrix over here helps you kind of achieve that in some sense and the way this is created is by chunking the text into let's say some k number of blocks and then deriving k embeddings where each of the embedding represents its block so for example if you have 10 words 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are 10 words that you have. And let's say for this word, you have the R as 1, which means you can look for your local attention with one previous word, which is this, and the one next word. Now the point was, how do you go about also knowing what's there in the context apart from these two words? So for that, let's say if you take a window of 2, then this is one of the windows, this is one of the windows, this is one of the windows, and then this. And eventually you can have one window as this so it totally depends if you want to have a overlapping window or non overlapping window which means the stride of that should be either one two or length of the block once you have that you derive the embedding for each block which is i think based on the summation yeah so they divide the input sequence into block of k tokens for each block we compute the global token which is the overall representation by summing and then normalizing the embeddings for each token in the block so yeah it's summing on the embedding for each of the words that occur in that block at an access level and then normalizing it to come up with the representation that now represents a block and that is what you use while doing your dot product with the current embedding for the central word now these three essentially represents three block where each of them could be let's say four consecutive words and now while calculating the attention you see the r words to your left r tokens to your right and then also these three block embeddings so that way you get a sense of general perception of what's there in the entire context with this you have saved your computation limit by a lot because they found block size of 16 to be sufficient which means 16 tokens in a block so now the overall complexity is what you had earlier which is with the local attention which is lr and you add on extra term because you are also now attending to the global block context and since we have block size of k so l by k number of blocks would be there so those are extra tokens that you attend to for each of the token that is there in your input. So now they have defined the Pegasus pre-training strategy. But I have a detailed video on this channel that talks totally about end-to-end -end what Pegasus does in terms of how does it choose important sentences, what are the performance numbers when it comes to summarization, what is their typical pre-training strategy. All of that is totally discussed in detail in that video. I'll give a link to that in the i button. Make sure to check it out. Cool. Moving forward. So yeah, now they have experiments and stuff and we are done with the paper. Just to give you a quick glimpse of the results, for archive, comparing long T5 with 16K inputs against all the approaches, we are by having numbers close to 48 Rouge 1 values. So this we see as a difference in terms of scaling to large inputs. But within this, also if you are taking large in Excel, which is by increasing the model capacity, the numbers further increase when we talk about the Excel part. So this justifies the initial claim what the authors made, which is with model size increasing and also its ability to capture longer sequence also increases. We are able to surpass existing results on some benchmark data. Cool. I think now we're done with paper. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Also, don't forget to see all the I button stuff that I've put because that will eventually build your base in terms of understanding what T5 and Pegasus models are. Cool, so I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.